nagħmilha bażikament dip bdiet hemm ħafna minn nies li jafu uni, jafu li jiena nagħmilha ver. U bibi kienu jittaggjaw nif ċertu post fejn jkun hemm kelb stray o kelb injured. U ħafna mid-drabi konna nitilqhom il-post anke mal arrustija u konna mmorru fuq il-post biex nagħmlu dan il-kelb. It wasn't something li kelli page tagħha jew. It was just something I would do. U dan aħħar I said tipo tant bdejt nara cases li qed jiġru li qatt jekk nagħmel page forsi kull ħadd jibgħat li fuq dak il-page jisu mhux qed jittaggjawni ma' kullum kien. And I would have a more strategic way of seeing stuff basically. I did it not with the thought that I would have blown up to such an extreme. It, it really blew, I mean, in a, a week and a half. There are nearly 4,000 followers and it was overwhelming. It happened so fast, you know. I didn't even have time to, to accept what was happening, basically. It's, it's always go, go, go. I mean, uh, I was very fortunate in these, this past week and a half. I managed to rehome about five dogs and a kitten. And I found them really good homes, really... I was really happy with that. I left a full-time veterinary's job to do this totally voluntary. Definitely, I'm not rich, I don't have a nice big fund in my bank account, it's always. But I did this, I prefer being, paying my expenses like this, basically. At the family, I have a good wage and I feel like I'm wasting my life because I, I always want to do something. I knew I had the potential, I wanted to do my own thing and to be as productive as I can. I mean, I would start in the morning now. Say I never woke up early. I wake up at, at seven in the morning, I'm out, <laughs> you know, taking on reports. And usually I'm taking on a report. Like last Sunday, two Sundays ago, there was a report of a puppy here. Philly, I'm looking for the puppy. And then I find another two dogs. So now I'm looking for three at the same time. And when you're alone, I mean, I do get a lot of help. You feel the public have been so helpful. If someone's in the area, they're going to look for it. I would take them in. The first thing I do is I take them either home or to my, my partner's sister's place. First thing, I give them a good wash. Um, I groom them, eyes, ears, paws. And unless it's a very difficult dog who is very aggressive or very afraid, they are all very compliant. They're so appreciative that they know that you're helping them. It's incredible how well behaved they are. I don't accept with rehoming the first person who comes. You feel there are 18, 20 people who call me. Um, and it's not just finding the right owner, who's a very nice person. There are certain dogs which, after this trauma, have been through so much, they need specific needs. So a dog with separation anxiety can't be left alone for eight hours. It's either going to bark or, or howl the house down. It's going to be destructive because it's feeling threatened. And they need someone who works short hours or who's on shift. You know, so there are dogs who need a certain routine. There are dogs. So it has to be the owner has to match with the dog's criteria of what they need, basically. I get a lot of um, contact from owners. Listen, please, you're doing a good job with your homing. I need to rehome this dog. So the thing is this. Um, if it's a real animal lover and someone tells them, it's my, um, even the, the way I would write a story, this owner, for a genuine reason, can't, there are reasons and there are reasons. This, uh, whatever the reason is, whether it's genuine or not, this person doesn't want that dog anymore. Do you feel this dog is living in a house that is not wanted? You can imagine a dog would sense the moment something changes, they get anxiety. Do you feel even if you are talking to them in a certain tone, they pick that up. And usually they do things out of destructiveness because they feel so stressed that um, they don't know how to act, basically. I Jeffrey would never go somewhere without my dogs. My dogs are my kids, but that's me. For me, they're family. Someone who's not as obsessed on their dog and it's an asset to their family, but it's a dog, isn't going to think twice about finding a place that takes their dog. Who else is going to spend seven months looking for premises that will accept them. I mean, this is something, and a lot of people have dogs that are kept either on the roof or in yards, and they're not allowed in the house. No, actually, on the soof and the cleanliness and paw marks. It's true, I mean, not a lot. Their paw marks are stained now on my floor, you know? But if you're getting a dog, you have to know what you're getting. It's like having a kid. <laughs> I'm here to stay, you know? <laughs> For sure, Jeffrey. Um, as time passes, I'm getting more opportunities. I was invited to two TV programs last week. I'm invited to another program in a couple of weeks. I've got two school talks um, that I can do. Um, it's basically animal awareness and teaching children um, how to raise a dog, that you have to respect animals. Basically, they're our, they're our future generations. So unless you educate kids at this age, 
you're not going to get anywhere better. My main aim is to have laws changed in Malta and maybe to have a police squad which is for animals.